just say amen. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Good morning, morning star. Amen. We said we come to praise him. Amen. How many really came to praise him? Don't, don't, don't fool me now. Amen. Amen. This is a good day to give him praise. Amen. We thank him for allowing our pastor to be here for 20, 21, 22, 22 years. Amen. Amen. We thank God for our pastor. We thank God for you. And we thank God for him being God. I don't know about you, but we, I got a praise on the inside. Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. Amen. It, it don't take you long to think about what he's done. But we just come to praise him and bless him on this day. God bless you and God keep you. Blessings, blessings. Come, let us adore him. Kneel down before him. Worship and adore him. Emmanuel. Amen. Please join us in prayer. 
Our Father, which art in heaven, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, we approach your throne in the name of Jesus. We ask you to hear our petition. First, we want to say thank you for this day and thank you for giving us life. And dear Lord, we thank you for giving us your spirit that want to be here in service. We thank you, dear God, for just our health and our strength and our board of members here at Morning Star Baptist Church. We can just look back and we can thank you and still not get it completed within the day. We ask you to look at our hearts and search, dear God, and we know you know. And if you find things that should not be, we ask you to remove it, replace it with your righteousness. We ask you to forgive us for our sins and our shortcomings. And Lord, we this day is special for Morning Star. We have our pastor who's been with us for 22 years, and we want to give you special thanks and just be obedient and, and, and just pour out our allegiance to you for safeguarding him. So many times that uh, I've heard him to ask you to build that hedge of protection around this body, the body of members. And Lord, you put that hedge of protection around him and his family. And we thank you so much for it. It's evidence. And we thank you for giving him the guidance to lead us as our shepherd, as our pastor. We thank you for giving him the strength and the mobility to be in places where he did not know that was coming, but you delivered him. And we thank you for his testimony. And dear Lord, we thank you for how the members here at Morning Star have opened our hearts and, and listened to his counsel and listened to his guidance. We ask you to continue to equip him to where we can be a united front and represent you. And dear Lord, we thank you for our board of members. We ask you to be with those who are not able to be with us and they might be joining us through the media. But Lord, we realize that there are some of the members who have grown in age and they are fevered and they're just not able to assemble. But we ask you to let your spirit be with them that they will remember that it was you who carried them when they had strength to maneuver. It's still you, dear Lord, who will be with them and comfort them. We ask you to be with the sick, the shed in, and those who will bereave. We ask you to let your mercy visit them and be with them and overshadow them that they will know that it is you who will save keep it. And Lord, we realize that all the power is in your hand and help us to give you all the glory. Help us to recognize that it is you who sustains us and be with us and forgive us for what we come short. And dear Lord, we ask you to hear this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And these blessings we ask in his name. Amen. Good morning. My, my name is Cassandra Jackson, and we would like to recognize all visitors today, as well as those watching on social media. Will all visitors please stand and remain standing? Good morning. Thanks for worshiping with us today. And if you're without a church home, we would like to invite you to join us here at Morning Star Baptist Church. Our services are every Sunday for Sunday school at 9 o'clock and worship services at 10. Thank you. You may be seated. Everybody have a blessed day. Good morning. Palm Sunday is the day we celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, one week before his resurrection. Matthew 21, 1, 11. 
As Jesus entered the holy city, he neared the culmination of a long journey toward Golgotha. He had come to save the lost, Luke 19, 10. And now was the time, this was the place to secure that salvation. Palm Sunday marked the start of what is often called Passion Week, the final seven days of Jesus' earthly ministry. Jesus and his disciples traveling over the Mount of Olives, the Lord sent two disciples ahead into the village of Budaphage to find an animal to ride. They found the unbroken coat of a donkey, just as Jesus had said they would. Luke 19, 29, 30. And Luke 19, 35. As Jesus ascended toward Jerusalem, a large multitude gathered around him. This crowd understood that Jesus was the Messiah. What they did not understand was that it wasn't time to set up the kingdom yet, although Jesus had tried to tell them so. Luke 19, 11, 12. The crowd went ahead of him, waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Matthew 21, 9. The shouts of Hosanna meant save now, and the palm branches symbolized goodness and victory. Interestingly, at the end of the Bible, people will wave palm branches once again to praise and honor Jesus Christ. Revelation 7, 9. Many years before Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem, the prophet Zechariah had prophesied the event we now call Palm Sunday. Rejoice greatly, daughter. Zion shout, daughter Jerusalem. Zechariah 9, 9. As the multitudes waved palm branches and shouted for joy, they missed the true reason for Jesus' presence. They could neither see nor understand the cross. That's why as Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. Luke 19, 41, 47. It is a tragic thing to see the Savior, but not recognize him for who he is. The crowds who were shouting, the crowds who were crying out Hosanna on Palm Sunday were crying out crucify him that week, the next week. Matthew 27, 22, 23. Immediately following the time of this celebration in the ministry of Jesus, he began his journey to the cross. Let the church say amen. And listen, the proper response after the Hosanna is, blessed be the Lord, uh, praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, that is the shout of praise uh, that they shared before us uh, in their coming in on that day. Uh, I rise this morning uh, to uh, just to remind you that uh, next week we will be, um, uh, we will be, celebrating Passion Week services, and on tomorrow night, we'll be at the Greater Fairview Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you all. Uh, and uh, I'll be uh, preaching on tomorrow. We'll be leading the worship on tomorrow, so we're asking all of our members uh, to come and to serve uh, our, our deacons, our urchins, our choirs, all of, all of us to be present on tomorrow night uh, at Greater Fairview at 7 o'clock p.m., and then on Tuesday night, we will be at Shady Grove Missionary Baptist Church, uh, where uh, Reverend Russell uh, from um, Greater Fairview will be uh, sharing on Tuesday night. On Wednesday night, we'll come back down the road to, to Morningstar. We'll be here on Morningstar, uh, at Morningstar. And I'm encouraging all of our members again to be here to help and urge you in the, the worship experience on Wednesday night. Uh, the uh, pastor of Cape Chapel, uh, Dr. Buckley, will be uh, uh, preaching on Wednesday night. And then Thursday night, we'll go further down the street to uh, St. Peter. And at St. Peter, uh, the pastor of Shady Grove, uh, uh, Dr. R.L. Mitchell will be uh, preaching on Thursday night, and, and St. Peter's uh, Church will be there. And then on Friday night, uh, we'll end at Cape Chapel, and uh, the newest pastor of St. Peter, 
uh, Reverend James Washington Jr. Uh, will be preaching on Friday night. I encourage you to come every night, uh, but I, I'm certainly asking Morningstar, please, ma'am, please, sir, to be there on Monday night as well as here on Wednesday night. And I, I believe that you'll be blessed across this weekend. Service begin at 7 o'clock uh, on each night. Uh, also, i uh, remind you that uh, on next Sunday is Easter. We'll be worshiping at 9. We will not have Bible, I mean, a Sunday school uh, uh, on, on next Sunday. Uh, it will all be centered around the, the children. They will make their presentations, and then, uh, then we'll give the word, and we'll, we'll have uh, the rest of the afternoon off. But again, uh, Sunday service will begin at 9, as we have done for, for a number of years now. And uh, I ask that you would take those announcements and certainly uh, judge your hearts accordingly. God bless you. Good morning, Morning Star. I have before me an open letter from the Mississippi State Senate, Senator Hillman T. Frazier, a proclamation and an honorarium flag from the Lieutenant Governor Delbert Hoseman. And the letter reads, Dear Pastor Johnson, I join the Morning Star family in thanking you for rendering 22 years of faithful service to Morning Star Baptist Church. You and Ms. Johnson have been a blessing to the Morning Star Church family, the city of Jackson, and the state of Mississippi. I often tell people that if you die and go to hell, it will not be because of the lack of sound Bible-based preaching in Jackson, Mississippi. You are an example of the outstanding preachers that God has sent here and to feed the flock with power, knowledge, and understanding. I talk with members of Morning Star Baptist Church from time to time, and they love their pastor. The members have grown spiritually because of your preachings and teaching. You are transforming the hearts of your members, and together you all are making a difference in Jackson, Mississippi. You are indeed feeding your flock with knowledge and understanding. I salute you for a job well done. My wife Jean and I congratulate you and pray that you will keep on winning souls for Christ. It is written, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring good tidings of good things. Romans 10, 15. I challenge you in the words of Paul to continue to preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. 2 Timothy 4 and 2. I have enclosed a flag of the state of Mississippi that was flown over the Mississippi State Capitol in recognition of your 22 years of service to the Morning Star Baptist Church. If I can be of, assist of any assistance to you and your members in any way, please let me know. This is from our Senator Hillman T. Frazier. The proclamation from the Mississippi State Senate, Hillman Senator Hillman T. Frazier honors family, joins family and friends to honor Pastor and Ms. Joan R. Johnson Jr. on the occasion of rendering 22 years of dedicated service to Morning Star Baptist Church, Jackson, Mississippi. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things, Romans 10, 15. This was done the 13th day of March, 2024, Jackson, Mississippi, Senator Hillman T. Frazier. And then the flag that was flown on March 13th, the state, the Mississippi state flag was flown over the state capitol on Wednesday, the 13th day of March, 2024, in honor of Pastor and Mrs. John R. Johnson Jr., given by him and T. Frazier, and this letter is signed by Dilbert Hoseman Jr., our Lieutenant Governor. Happy anniversary. Yeah. 
once again. Good morning, Morning Star Church family. To our members, Representative Frazier, pleasure for you being uh, here worshiping with us today. To celebrate our beloved Pastor John R. Johnson, Jr. <clears throat> I don't need any written words to talk about our pastor. I could do it from the flowing of my heart. But the Lord said, Rock, you better write something down. <laughs> but today, as we come to celebrate a remarkable milestone in the journey of faith, a journey marked by dedication, compassion, and unwavering commitment, for 22 years, Pastor Johnson has been a guiding light leading our congregation with wisdom and grace. And that word grace, it means elegant. You know, if, if, you, if you like football, it's smooth like Walter Payton, sweetness. You know, he's done that with grace. Throughout the years, Pastor Johnson has not only preached the word of God, but he has also lived it, touching the lives of our countless individuals within our church family and within the community. Throughout moments of joy and sorrow, victories and challenges, Pastor Johnson has been a pillar of strength, support, and encouragement to all who need it, who all has requested it, and to all who have seeked it. Under Pastor Johnson's leadership, there's no doubt our church has grown tremendously, flourished, Growing not only in members, but also in spirit. That's the main thing. We're growing in spirit through his teachings. And just let me put a bookmark right there when it comes to spirit. Pastor, when you first got here 22 years ago, those young children that were four or five years old, they're grown now. Some are married. They have families. And... I may paraphrase it just a little bit, but you always made it intentional to pray for them as they go off to school. Particularly our baccalaureate students who are graduating, going to college. You always tell them, Morningstar is home, but find you a church home where you can get the word wherever you are. And Got a phone call from my son. Great. He said, Dad, I need Pastor Johnson's phone number. I said, okay. You know, I ain't think nothing of it. But he had gotten engaged, and he said, I want Pastor Johnson to counsel me and Gabby. And also, I want him to marry us. And he did that. And on yesterday, we celebrated a baby shower. A little girl will be coming. And I just thank you for instilling into the youth of this church that compassion and love. And you will never be forgotten by them. That's just a personal story. Um, I get back on track. But you've been dedicated. And normally when you get phone calls from people late at night or early in the morning, the first thing you say is, uh-oh, what they want, you know. And I can remember when the pandemic hit. I was at home, and Pastor John said, I want a stream service. We wasn't set up. 
we wasn't ready, but he had his little iPhone. And we stood right there in the middle, and we streamed our service. And now, we're streaming across the world today. We have people online today sharing the word. I'm requesting that they share this today so someone else can hear the word today. But throughout your heartfelt sermons and acts of kindness, Pastor Johnson, you have fostered a sense of unity and belonging that transcends walls and boundaries. Today we reflect on your 22 years as a faithful servant. We are filled with gratitude for the countless blessings bestowed upon us for having you as our pastor. And as I go to my seat, I'm reminded of a story. Now the first story is already out front with the little red wagon. And if you hadn't contributed to the little red wagon, you might need to do so the day before you leave. But there was a young man looking at a painting. And the painting was Jesus and Satan having a chess match. And the caption on the painting said, Checkmate. Well, the young man that was looking at the painting, no one knew he was the chess champion of Russia. So he knew about chess. And he looked at the painting, and he kept looking at the painting, and all of a sudden he stepped back. And he was yelling down the street, it's not over. It's not over. It's not over. Folks were looking at him like, what is this man talking about? Because on the chess match in that painting, he told everybody, it's not over because Jesus got another move. <laughs> Pastor Johnson, I'm declaring today that Jesus got another move. For you, as pastor of Morningstar Baptist Church. Now, I'm going to do this in rock fashion. And I'm going to ask Robert, our musician, to give me a strong A-flat chord. A strong rolling chord. Just roll it. Roll it. Fulton, I need you to come in, too. Give me some cymbals. Give me some cymbals. I want everybody, for 22 years of service, I want you to get on your feet, put your hands together, and celebrate our pastor, John R. Johnson, Jr., for his dedicated service. Johnson, we know you, they hide you sometimes, but we love you, and we're going to give your flowers today. We have a bouquet of flowers for you today, and a wonderful peace lily for you. We can keep it down here, or you can come get them. I want you to come get them. <laughs> Pastor John, although the little red wagon is going to take care of a lot of stuff, but in this bag here, it's going to be something when you open it, you're going to shout hallelujah. <laughs> but again, thank you, sir, for 22 years of service. And as my dad said one time, you got a long way to go. <laughs> but I know you'll get there because Jesus got another move. Thank you all. Have a blessed day.
me through I'm living this moment because of you and I want to thank you and praise you too your grace and mercy brought me through your grace your Brought me, brought me I'm living this moment.
bless the Lord this uh, morning, my brothers and sisters. We're preparing to go into the Word, and uh, Pastor Canada, uh, Minister of Music, is here, uh, Clinton Ransburg. Uh, we're going to invite you to come up to the podium at this time. He's going to bless us in a message of song before uh, Pastor preaches, and uh, we invite you to come at this time. Uh, but as he's coming, uh, Pastor uh, Canada is no stranger uh, to Morning Star. Uh, he's a, a faithful friend of mine, and and uh, I uh, look to him for counsel on, on many occasions. And he's been an awesome, awesome friend. And I uh, called him at the last minute, and he agreed to do so. Uh, Pastor Canada serves the Pilgrim Rest Missionary Baptist Church there in uh, uh, in Madison. And uh, he serves on many, many boards across the state of Mississippi, and he serves uh, at the National Baptist Convention. And uh, but most of all, he's a great preacher, soul out man of God. And uh, and I ask that you would hear he hear ye him. Uh, I have known Pastor Kanda uh, uh, lots of my life, uh, and uh, uh, but uh, uh, his mother is here. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Kanda used to be the yeah, what you call it? Uh, yeah, she sold those little cups of ice. Mm. Yeah, snowball. Thank you. She was our snowball lady in in in, in this area, and uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, kind of still lives here on, on Shady Oaks, and and uh, and when we go get snowballs. Boy, we would pray that Miss Ethel answer the door, cause Mr. Uh, Matthew he wouldn't give you enough syrup. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he'd be stingy with it. But we we used to always pray that Miss Ethel would answer the door, and uh, Miss Ethel is still here and still looking good. We're delighted uh, to have them. And uh, Pastor Canada is going to come in his own special way after uh, his ministry music has shared with us uh, a song, and then he'll come in his own way. God bless you. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here this morning. If you'll give me the key of B flat, I'll be really quick and get out of your way so we can receive the word of God. I was young, but I recall. Singing songs was my mother's joy. As the shadows gathered at the close of the day. Upon her knee in those days that used to be my mother, she sang of God's amazing. amazing. Amazing grace, Mother was so good and kind. Often she told me I would not find. No, no, not another who would share my grief. And woe. So I took her at her word, and late one Tuesday evening I saw my blessed Lord. And today, my mother's God, her God. Will you help me sing the hymn of the church? Amen. Then grace. How, how sweet the
people said amen. amen. And truly, the God I serve All right, uh, is a good God. Mm -hmm. And he's one who is worthy to be praised. Yeah. 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 Uh, brothers, y'all go ahead and sit down. I'm almost finished. One thing I do know, that God works in ways beyond any understandings. And I never would have thought in my years of growing up over their own Shady Oak Street, that I'd be standing here again with Pastor Johnson, affectionately known as John. And so <clears throat> if I slip and call him John, don't y'all get mad and say I'm dishonoring your pastor. But you know, friends are on first name basis. Every time you pray, you don't say our Father or the Lord or Holy Spirit, you say Jesus. Because y'all on first name basis. And then the, that's how I am. And Paulette, it's always good to see you looking like your mama. <laughs> and uh, I just want to stand here for a little minute so you can look me over. <laughs> you know how Baptist folk are. When a preacher comes in to preach, and especially if they don't know him, they're wondering if he can preach. And I promise you, I, I want the same thing. But I'm not here to preach. I'm here to worship with you as you celebrate your pastor and Sister Paulette's 22nd year. And uh, whatever we say, we'll say it together. Um, because one thing I do know about Brother John, 
He is a sincere pastor who loves his people. And so I thank you again for Pastor giving me the opportunity to come <clears throat> and share with you. I, uh, I must be getting older because uh, the sinuses keep bothering me and stuff like that, but uh, in spite of it, I'm going on. I'm going to read and you preach. And when you get tired of preaching, then I'll come in and join in with you. How about that? But together, we're going to worship God. I see some of my members here and some folks I know, Senator and all. I'm not going to call his name because I'll mess them up. Uh, but now I have some members here. I'm not going to tell you where they are. I'm going to leave that to be a mystery so maybe you act all right. You won't say nothing about it. So now you're looking around trying to see who it is. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Second Timothy chapter 1. I want to commit reading. Let me read a lot. I'm going to begin reading with verse 3. Second Timothy chapter 1. I want to start reading at verse number 3. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. Verse 5 says this. When I call to remembrance the unfinished faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois mm -hmm. and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You may be seated in the presence of God. I want to tag that text, a call to remembrance. A call to remembrance. Um, one thing I do recognize uh, after Katrina, not Katrina, but the pandemic, folk don't like to stay in church long now. <laughs> amen. amen. You can come say amen. I'm not going to bother you. Uh, they they want to get in there, and they want to get out. And and it it definitely helps if you can get there before the line gets long. Uh, trying to get your lunch. And, and so I I said that because I had typed in a whole lot of stuff, John, that I wanted to say. But uh, I was already late. And I didn't want to make the folk mad two times. <laughs> but a call to remembrance. There are some times in life where there are certain things that happen and take place that call us to remember certain things. Um, there are some people uh -huh. um, 
that will call your attention to something. Have you ever noticed being, as you're growing up and moving from one phase of life to the next, there's always that person that comes up and reminds you of who you once was? They, they, they'll approach you saying something like, well, I remember when you were... I, I was listening to the pastor a few minutes ago, and he was talking almost 40, 50 years ago about my mother selling those, uh, we call them snow cones, but I don't know what it was, was Kool-Aid in a little cup. And uh, he remembered, he recalled that. It brought back to his remembrance. I remember us growing up in the neighborhood when, when you could play on the streets at night and you could ride your bicycle and skate up and down the streets. Uh, maybe somebody else can remember that kind of stuff. And when you come into the neighborhood, it is a call to remembrance how things once was. Sometimes you wish <clears throat> that you could reach back and, and savage some of that stuff and bring it back to the forefront. And, and I hear Timothy and Paul's conversation. I hear Paul uh, a call to remem remembrance and reminding uh, Timothy of some very important things. When Timothy and Paul separated, it was a very uh, uh, emotional time because Paul loved Timothy so much so that he called him his son. He, he was he was there and laying hands on Timothy to prepare him for the ministry. And uh, Paul was a friend of the family. He knew his mother and his grandmother. He knew his father. He knew that he had not been circumcised because he had a mixed interracial family. He knew that situation. And when Paul had to leave, he said it left his heart heavy. It, it brought tears to the eyes because he didn't want to depart. But here in our text, in this uh, second epistle that Timothy, uh, 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 Paul writes to Timothy, he's expressing from prison some things that he want Timothy to keep in mind. I, I want to I call to remembrance. What he's saying is, number one, he said, I, I want to call to promote. I want you, uh, there's a call to remembrance for you to promote the gift. Promote the gift. Promote, promote the gift of, of prayer. Promote the gift of 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 praise, promote the gift of faith. He said, I, I, want to, I want you to keep the faith. I want you to remember the faith by which you first started with. I, I, I know, he says, as, I, as I, I call you to remembrance, he said, I want you to also remember that perilous times are going to come. Uh, you, you, Paul writes in his epistle, if you, if you follow Paul, he talks over in that third chapter, I believe, he said, there's going to be times where they're going to be lovers. People are going to be lovers of themselves. Uh, they're going to be those that are disobedient to parents. They're going to be unthankful. They're going to be those that are without natural affection. Uh, they're going to be those without natural affection. They're going to be those without natural affection. Missed it. There can be those without natural affection. 
despisers of those that are good, lovers of pleasure more than of God, having a form of godliness. He said, I want you to be aware. I, I, want, you to, I want you to be reminded of your gift that you first gotten, that perilous times are coming. And I think it's, it's, it's fitting, but Pastor, that I, I just say to you parenthetically, uh, we're living in those times. We're living in times where, where people love themselves more than they love God. We're living in a time where folk look uh, beyond your faults. Uh, but no, they look at your faults and, and don't even care about your needs. We, we, we're living in a time where we are thankful for what we have and care not about what no one else making out here. We're living in some time where folk will lie on you and hug your neck at the same time. We're living in some perilous times. And, 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 and Paul is trying to encourage Timothy that you're going to have to preach through this. You will have to weigh your way through it because it's not going to be easy. Folk are going to uh, are going to gonna, gonna not in here sound doctrine. He says to he says to Timothy, uh, uh, not only to promote the gift and and the perilous times, but he said, I want you to preach the word, regardless of what you come up against, regardless of what they say, preach the word. He said, I want you to be instant. In season and out of season. I want you to preach sound doctrine. I, you know, folk don't want to hear sound doctrine no more. They, they want to hear stuff that make them feel good. Stuff that make you run the aisle and, and swing from one chandelier to the other like Tarzan and Jane. They want you to, they want you to give them a lot of baptic caustics that, that make them feel good. And, and then when you walk away, you don't know what it is. They, they, they still asking the question that we used to sing in the song, what is this? Well, well somebody needs to give the answer, but pastor, and give them the answer, if whatever it is, it ought to make you hold your peace. Whatever it is, it ought to make you love your enemies. Whatever it is, it ought to make you treat your neighbor right. Whatever it is, it ought to make you say amen every now and then. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. I tell you what it is. It's called the Holy Spirit, and when it get, when it get in you, oh Lord, I wish I had time to talk. Because we we talk very little in the Baptist Church about the Holy Spirit because we're afraid of it, and because we see and heard so much about the Holy Spirit about what it does on the outside, but the Holy Spirit is a He, and He lives on the inside. And he's the one that guides our tongue and helps us to walk and helps us to keep our lips when we should be speaking. He's the one that helps us to hold up holy hands. He's the one that makes us cry when we think about how bad they did our Father Jesus Christ. He is that Holy Spirit that moves inside of us. Oh, I tell you what, you don't have to call on his right there. And Paul is saying to Timothy, stir it up. Shake it up, Doc. I, 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 know, I know it gets rough sometimes. I know it gets dark around here sometimes. I know sometimes you preach and you preach and you preach, and folk just sit there and look at you. You wonder if you're doing any good. But listen, the Bible said everything that had breath ought to say something sometimes. I don't know about you, but y'all excuse me. I'm, I'm from the country. Y'all excuse me. I don't need no rocks crying out for me. I know who I am. I, I know where I come from. And I know if it had not been for... Uh oh I raised my voice. Y'all don't like that. I, I know that it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. See, y'all, 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 y'all don't, y'all... I ain't always been no preacher. I ain't always been in the preacher. I ain't always been in the pulpit. I've always gone to church. That was a requirement. I wish I had one amen from back then. I said going to church was a requirement. If you lived at my mama's house, you had to go to church. Now, I, 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 now there's a difference between going to church. <laughs> 
and have some church inside you. I did a lot of church going. My mom went to church, man. She go to church and we take go leave at eight o'clock. We may not get back home, doc, until about three or four o'clock. <laughs> she wants to be the first one there and the last one to leave. And, and, and we would pass all of the churches up in here. And we'd go way out in the country somewhere. Out of all the baptismal pools that was around Jackson, I ended up getting baptized in a pond. Carl remembers. You have to remember where you come from so you can appreciate. If, 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 listen, if you can't look back and see where you come from, that means you're still there. Every time, every now and then when I take, I look back and I can see how far, I, I remember those days on Shady Oak Street. I tell you something else y'all don't know. I come out of Pleasant Avenue. I come from a little old alley called Mac David Lane. And scared now to drive through. You've got you to learn how to appreciate where you come from. So you can thank God for where you are. So, so listen, if nobody says amen for a preacher while you're preaching, go on and preach it. Because the times are coming and it's rough and we're going to need to hear a word from the Lord. I, I said to the church this morning a few minutes ago, isn't it strange how on the, on the cross, on the uh, hill of Calvary, how Jesus was standing between two thieves and one thief was having another discussion with the other thief. And the man in the middle was sitting there listening. Mm-hmm. One said to him, he said, 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 look, if you are who you are, say who you are, come down and save us and yourself too. And the other one said, listen, leave him alone. He said, Father, when you come in here, can't you remember me? Because I know where I come from. I, I know what I've done in my life. Remember me. Oh, I, I need somebody to help me here to help me to understand we got to learn how to remember the Lord. Remember that God has brought us from a mighty long no, no, he hadn't brought us all the way. I, I know we like to say that he brought us all the way. I ain't made it all the way yet. But he brought me from a mighty long day. I'm not going to tell you everything that I used to do, I don't do. Because I'm still doing some stuff. The Lord is still working on me. So please forgive me because God isn't through with me yet. I, I know he's finished with some of you. That's why you said look sometimes and won't say amen. It's because you're standing in judgment. But when you look down, you'll see where some stuff ain't right. But when you start looking up, you'll see that all my help come from the Lord. Well, but Pastor, I got to go here because I didn't come here to stay long, but I just want to call you some of the remembrance to do one thing, preach. Whatever else you do, preach. Preach in season and preach out of season. Preach the truth. Uh, ignore our uh, fiction. Don't worry about trying to tell it for the politicians to understand it. Tell it so that folk will know that God is still on the throne. Tell it so men and women will know that Jesus died and he rose for our sins. Yeah, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. Yeah, I, I, I need you to know to have no fear, John. Have no fear because some folk will stare at you. And they're trying to intimidate you. Well, do like I do. Just turn to the other side and find you somebody that's clapping their hand like that sister right there. And just preach on, telling them that God is still uh, in the blessing business. Uh, rest in the power of the Holy Spirit. And he will give you the love and the sound mind. Oh, tell men and women, boys and girls, that the wages of sin, but the gift of God, is eternal life. Oh, I know we have a reason to celebrate today because today is Palm Sunday. Every Christian, every child of God ought to be excited about Palm Sunday. But I tell you what really excites me is what comes after Palm Sunday. What excites me is Easter. Easter excites me. That's the day when we declare that Jesus rose. Anybody know he rose? I said, did anybody in here know he rose? You need to tell somebody that he's not dead. He's alive. And he's alive forevermore. I wish I I I could preach it like I feel it, but somebody needs to know that Jesus is still on the main throne. All you got to do is call him up and tell him what you want. 
I tried him for myself and I know that the man is all right. Jesus, the master's lamb of God. Jesus, uh, God's only begotten son. Jesus, uh, maybe a little baby. Somebody call him a bright and a morning star. Mama and them say he's a lily of the valley. I just call him Jesus. Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus in a noontime hour, Jesus in a midnight hour, every now and then, I can feel him moving inside of me. I said every now and then, because every day ain't the same. Sometimes I'm up and sometimes I'm down. Sometimes I feel like I'm level to the ground. But I've learned, I said I've learned y'all how to call on the name of Jesus. Anybody call him Jesus? Yes, he will. He'll be a doctor in a sick room, a father for the fatherless. Excuse me, y'all. I want to be a little personal here. I love the Lord. He heard my cry, pity my every groan. Long as I live. Oh, y'all didn't come to hell worship today. Long as I live, as trouble rise, I'm going to hold on to his hand. I'm going to hold on to his unchanging hand. Anybody know him today? Won't he make a way? I said, won't he make a way? Can I ask you a couple of questions right now? Who woke you up this morning? Who started you on your way? Who put a clothes on your back? Let me tell you who it was. Jesus. Jesus. The one that wiped the death of sleep from your weeping eyes. Jesus. The one that clothed you in your right mind. Jesus. 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 A rock in a weary land. Yes. Yes. Somebody said, Preacher, why you holler so much? Because you don't know, like I know, what the Lord has done for me. He's done so much for me, I can't tell it all. Jesus, Jesus, yes, yes, yes. Anybody in here know him? I said, anybody in here know him? Has anybody tried him? Has anybody tried him? Can you wave your hand? I said, just wave at me. Wave at me like you just don't care. I know if you're in sin. I know if you're in trouble. I know a man from Galilee. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Yes! Yes! I've had some good days And I've had some hills to climb Come on, you can work with me I've had some weary days And sleepless nights But when I look around and think things over, all my good days outweigh my bad days. I won't complain. This is my verse here. Sometimes my clouds hang low 
I can hardly see see the road I ask the question Lord oh Lord oh Lord oh Lord how much more but he knows what's best for me I wish I had a witness in here. Although my weary eyes can't see, so I'll say thank you, Lord. Do you ever just tell him thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't complain. I I'm going to tell you right quickly. God, he's been good to me. Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? He's been so good to me. More than you could ever be. He's been so good. He's been so good to me. He dried all of, all of my tears away. Turns my midnights into day. The doors are open. So I say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. God, he's been good to me. Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? He's been so good to me. More than you could ever be. He's been so good. So good. So good. So good to me. He drives all, all of my tears away. Turn my midnights into day. So I say thank you, Lord. I've been lied on, but thank you, Lord. I've been talked about, but thank you, Lord. My body racked with pain sometimes, but thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help me say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I, I won't complain. The door of the church is open, and there's one here this morning, for the gospel has been preached. If you're here today, you've never confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. I want to invite you to come at this time. You don't have to fix yourself up, make yourself right. Jesus did that for us when he died for your sins and my sins. But early the third day morning, he rose from the grave with all power of heaven and earth in his hands. And if you're willing, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him up. The Bible says that thou shalt be saved. This invitation is to you. Won't you come by letter, Christian experience, candidate for baptism? Won't you come today? room that's time for you once you come today Stand and 
watch the Lord see you through after you done. As uh, uh, they're getting the necessary information, I do want to remind you, just after service, there's a repast that has been prepared in the gymnasium. You're welcome to go over and share in time of fellowship and food with one another. And uh, certainly those persons from Pilgrim Rest, if you go through the line first, and we know that you have been in service since 9 o'clock. So uh, we'd we'll, we'll love to have you to stay and share in food and fellowship with us as well. To Pastor Johnson, other ministers of the gospel, Morningstar family, Morningstar officers, we are blessed to have uh, Brother William Emerson and Sister Shamika Emerson coming by Christian experience and Mistress Amira Riley coming by baptism. <clears throat> My brothers, after hearing their testimony, bless you. Shout amen. amen. We're thankful to have you, and I pray uh, that uh, you'll join us for orientation beginning next Sunday at 845, and then on the first Sunday we'll come and we'll have uh, baptism uh, for 
a myriad. <laughs> Amen for a myriad. And uh, then we'll extend to you the right hand of fellowship, and you'll have every right and privilege as every other member. I pray that between now and heaven, you won't need another church. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Listen, what a great family. Mama joined last week, and they're here this week. pastor and um, whether y'all realize or not it's a it's a it can be a predicament it can be a predicament to um, have a pastor that is a husband and but I feel so privileged and and I I thank God for him so I want to just say briefly as my pastor um, I appreciate the light that he bears in dark times, when there are times of discouragement, the light that he carries, and it's the light of Jesus um, through the Holy Spirit, illuminating the way. I appreciate his leadership, um, helping us to see places that we never thought we'd go. Um, Rock mentioned during the pandemic, I'm just amazed at what God did during that time. Um, and how he leads us in our particular ministries, um, giving us guidance. And lastly, is his love. I have never met a person who exemplifies unconditional love like my pastor. I have seen him um, orchestrate through lies, through um, backbiting, he loves with the love of Christ, and it is such an example for me. Um, so I honor my pastor on today because of his light, the way he leads, and the love that he exemplifies. And as his wife, I want to say I thank you, Morning Star Baptist Church, um, for the love that you've shown, um, for the support that you've given. You know, both of my parents are gone now, and there's some of you that mother me, that father me, that are my sisters and my brothers, and I am indeed grateful for the love that we have for one another, another. and um, to God be the glory. brothers and sisters, uh, I had a whole list of W's I was going to share with you this morning, but for the sake of time, uh, I do want to, I do want to say, uh, I thank you for over 27 years ago, you welcomed us, uh, from Virginia back here to the state of Mississippi. And, and then 22 years ago, you welcomed us back as pastor. And, uh, I thank you so kindly, uh, for the hospitality and, and we've had some challenges that we've overcome but listen we've overcome them together and uh, and then God has so much more than what we've been through and uh, and so I encourage you to continue to pray for us uh, uh, let's love on each other in this process and allow God to do what only God can do and uh, I certainly want to take the time to thank, uh, again, Mr. Frazier, uh, Honorable uh, William uh, uh, Frazier, for him, his presence as well as the citation. Love you, my brother. You and your wife, we thank you so kindly. And uh, certainly uh, to Pastor Canada, uh, uh, who's done an awesome job, and uh, we're thankful for him and for his congregation sharing with us uh, uh, to uh, uh, the presentations. Brother Rock and uh, Sister uh, Daphne, we thank you uh, so kindly. Uh, again, I, I ask that you would go by uh, and receive the food. Uh, food and uh, fellowship is planned in the gymnasium. We'd love to have you to participate with us there. If all hearts and minds are satisfied, let's stand together.
We're going to, uh, I'm going to ask Pastor Cunningham to come and close us in prayer. Thank you again for having us and thank you for your patience of listening as we share what God has given us. I want to thank uh, Reverend Cotton, one of our social ministers, for coming in with me and uh, Reverend Jesse James Jr. for coming and being with me as well. Again, let's pray for each other, but certainly be prayerful for your pastor. Um, we as a we as a people, we must learn how to undergird our pastor. Um, the higher he goes, the stronger he is, the stronger you are. Um, you can do a lot more with him than you can without him. Amen. So love your pastor, love your first lady, and be thankful for her. God, how we thank you for Pastor Johnson and Sister Paulette. How we thank you for the leadership of this church, the officers, trustees, and ministry leaders. How we thank you for the members who come Sunday after Sunday and day after day to make morning star all that she is and Lord we thank you for this precious privilege to honor one of your servants and I know you're well pleased because you said we should do this now Lord we leave from this place but never from your presence. We pray, God, that you would bless the food that has been prepared, the time and the labor that has gone with them. And everything that we do, we want you to be the glory. Thank you now, Lord, for what you have already done. Thank you for what you are doing in the life and ministry of Morning Star. And then, God, we thank you afresh for what you're going to do in all of our lives. Keep us now, and we'll be careful to give you all of the glory and all of the praise. It's in the matchless, mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.